tell you a secret. You want to know how to make $110,000 tax-free? Why am I whispering? What's going on, everybody? Jeff Rose back with another video from goodfinancialsense.com. Check it. So today I want to talk about a little secret tactic tax strategy and a strategy that I currently utilize that I will make potentially $110,000 tax-free. What? What? Yes, that's right. $110,000 tax-free. And this is a strategy that you can implement too. So without further ado, let's find out what this tax strategy, what the secret is to get this tax-free money. So yes, I like tax-free money and I hope that you like tax-free money too. Now, if you watched a previous video of mine, I talked about how to become a Roth IRA millionaire. The Roth IRA is one of the greatest investment tools that you can take advantage of. So if you've not started a Roth IRA, what are you waiting for? Do it! Just do it! Now, one thing I didn't mention in that video, that there is one limitation with the Roth IRA. And that's if you make too much money. So if you make too much green, the Roth IRA is gonna be kinda of mean. So if you're single making $133,000, or if you're married filing jointly, and if you make over $199,000, sorry, you cannot invest into a Roth IRA. Now for many that do not make that amount of income, you're probably thinking, I don't feel sorry for them at all. And you shouldn't because they're, they're doing okay, right? So in my case, I love the Roth IRA. So I started investing into the Roth IRA when I was 24 years of age, and I put in as much as I could. I finally started maxing out closer into my late 20s. But then something happened. I started making more money, and guess what? I got phased out. I could not put a single dollar into the Roth IRA. No soup for you. Do you feel sorry for me? You probably don't. So while I was a bit upset that I couldn't put any more money, any new money to my Roth IRA, the money was still there, it was still invested, it could still grow. So, you know what, at least it was still growing and I could make tax-free money later on. But then something cool happened, I guess it was kinda cool. When I left my old investment firm and co-founded my other investment firm, I had a 401k that I could roll over. And I had a few decisions to make with this 401k. Now I could roll it over into a traditional IRA, I could cash it out, which is a stupid idea, don't do that or I could convert it into a Roth IRA. Now with converting into a Roth IRA, what that means is that whatever the account balance was in that 401k, I would have to claim that as income for that year. So let me give you an example. If I was making $100,000 a year and the balance in that 401k was $40,000 and I wanted to do a Roth IRA conversion, that means tax-wise, I would have to claim $140,000 as income for that year. So you're probably wondering, why in the world would you ever want to do that? Well, once again, the idea with the Roth IRA is that you're paying tax now on a much lower amount so that you can have tax-free money later on. But to do that, you want to make sure that you have the cash on hand, whether it be your checking account, your savings account, underneath the mattress, wherever that is, to pay that tax. Otherwise, it just won't be worth it. And for many, that's just a hard pill to swallow, a big chunk of cash to come up with to pay for those taxes. So it might not make the most sense. So here's where I got kind of lucky in my situation. Whenever I left my old investment firm, it was the end of 2007 right before the last stock market, the financial crisis happened and the stock market crashed. So my 401k, which I think the balance was somewhere in that 40 to $45,000 range, whenever all the investments in it tanked because I was 100% invested in the stocks and the stock mutual funds, my 401k was only worth about 24,000 if I recall at the time. So my account had been here and now it was here and that's whenever I left. So whenever I left my old investment firm and went to roll over my 401k and instead did the Roth IRA conversion, instead of having to pay tax on 40,000 or 45,000, I only had to pay tax on the lower amount, the 25,000. And here's when it gets better. So in a 401k, you're somewhat limited into the investment choices that you have. It's usually gonna be mutual funds, ETFs, very seldom can you actually choose your own investments. But whenever I rolled it to the Roth IRA, I was allowed to pick and choose the investments that I wanted to make. 
So me being able to pick my investments, in this case was individual stocks, that's how I've been able to generate profits of over $110,000. So what did I pick? How did it work? Let's take a look. All right, so now we're a little sneak peek behind the scenes. So this is the uh, the Roth IRA that I have. So as you may or may not see that um, it's not a huge balance. Uh, right now, I think uh, total value is about $132,000. Um, reason being is that uh, I, I maxed out the Roth IRA for a few years. And before that, I was putting money into my 401k and putting much into my Roth as I could. And then I hit a point, as uh, I mentioned at the beginning of this video, where I just wasn't, uh, I was making too much. So I couldn't do the Roth IRA anymore. Could do the backdoor Roth IRA, but just from a taxable standpoint, just for the income level, it made more sense to do a SEP IRA. And now I fully maxed out my traditional 401k with the, uh, the standard contribution plus profit sharing, all that good stuff. So I've been socking away a pretty good chunk into the 401k for myself and my wife for the last uh, several years. So right now, uh, a bulk of our assets are either in the 401k and also we have stuff in cash and I know cash, right? And also just in taxable accounts as well. Uh, obviously peer to peer lending, which you've seen and some other accounts. So we kind of we kind of have stuff spread out, but right now this is my Roth IRA. My wife also has a Roth IRA. Uh, that's uh, just about half the, uh, the value that you see here. So anyway, that's a little bit behind the scenes. As I mentioned, um, I can't remember exactly what the balance was prior to me doing the Roth IRA conversion. So I had my old 401k at my old investment firm that I think at the high, it was about 40,000. It was over 40, I do remember that. So it was between 40 and 45,000. And by the time the financial crisis happened back in 2008, uh, I saw that account value drop from mid 40s down to, I believe it was between 20 to 24,000. So almost half uh, loss in value in the course of uh, six months or so. And for many people, that would be devastating. And that's where many people will freak out, they'll cash out, or they'll move it into something safer, into bonds, cash, money market, whatever, until the market recovers, which is the absolute worst strategy that you can do. Uh, because by the time the market recovers and you feel good about the market, you've already missed out on get, getting back a lot of those losses. So in my case, as I as I've mentioned, like it was kind of lucky in a sense that I could convert uh, that 24 ish thousand, whatever that was into a Roth IRA. And I only had to pay tax on that 20,000 instead of I would have left when the market was a high and had to pay tax on that much higher amount, you know, that 40, 45,000. So I moved that over and I don't exactly know what I was invested to at the time. Um, I, I mean, I really don't remember, but I will say that everything I own now would have been purchased after converting uh, and converting that into the Roth. So one of the first purchases that you'll see here, um, let's see if I can blow this up a little bit. And so one of the first ones uh, here would have been Visa. So this is Visa stock, uh, currently own 800 shares. Uh, purchase cost was 12,035 bucks. Market value is currently 91,000. Uh, so the gain on that is currently 79,000. So what was the story on Visa? So here's a look on uh, Yahoo Finance. Um, you can see the chart on Visa I went back uh, the max period, I believe. So in this case, what happened was is that I think a year or two prior to Visa coming out uh, with their stock, MasterCard uh, had came out with their stock. And let me see if I can pull up MasterCard real quick. So MasterCard, currently 152. Um, let's see if you, so you can kind of see the chart here, right? So MasterCard came out back in 06, uh, came out at five bucks a share, currently worth 152. And that, that happened relatively quickly. So I saw MasterCard, uh, increase in price really quick. So when Visa was coming out with their, their IPO, I thought, you know what? I, I want to get on this, get in on this because if it's going to have the same growth like MasterCard, why not? Now, for many, getting into an IPO is almost not impossible, but it is very hard unless you just have a lot of money or you got some connections. I don't think I even tried to get in on the IPO price. 
So I basically just waited until after the IPO released and then you could buy it on the secondary market. And that's when I got in. So I got in somewhere in this 15, I think the $20 range, which actually, if you go back to my purchase cost, uh, break out the calculator here. So was it 12,035, bought 800 shares. So 15, so $15 and about five cents is what I got in on Visa. So 800 shares, obviously, we'll show it about more. And that's been more of a, a long-term ride. You know, that was bought here, so 15 bucks, somewhere here back in March or so of 2008. And then, uh, as you can see, the ride has been great ever since. A lot of increase here in the last uh, two years, especially. So Visa currently $114 a share. So that was the big gain there. So of the $110,000 gain I mentioned, that represents uh, 79,000, uh, of that gain. So pretty, pretty big, large amount. I'm actually going to increase this one more time. There we go. All right, there we go. So, and then the other big win was Facebook. Uh, Facebook came out a few years ago and kind of kicking myself here. I only bought 200 shares here in my raw. So I bought 200 shares, at, um, I think it was about 20, actually, well, so purchase cost was 45.92 divided by 200. So 22.96 is what I bought Facebook at. And as you can see, 200 shares uh, at a purchase cost of just $4,500. $4,592 is currently worth $35,860 for a total gain of $30,699. Now, a funny thing about Facebook stock, uh, so I also own Facebook in, um, oops, in my, I think my wife's Roth IRA and also in our joint account. So I did buy more uh, shares of Facebook in other my other accounts, but check this out. Here's a part that I think is funny. So for those who don't remember this, so Facebook came out, the IPO price was $38 per share, $38 per share. And I think the initial price was supposed to be somewhere like in the low 30s, maybe high 20s. By the time it actually hit the, the secondary market, so this is when most investors can actually get in, it was 38 bucks a share, quickly shot up to about 42 bucks a share. I mean, it was really, really quick. And I had so many people freaking out about uh, wanting to get in, you know, wanting to buy Facebook IPO, wanting to get in, wanting to get in. And I told a lot of people, listen, I'm not going to buy it the first day. Like, I'm not going to do that because I've seen this happen so many times where the IPO price, I, the price comes out, IPO comes out, stock market or the stock price soars, and then it comes back crashing down. And I just didn't want to play that game. But then the day that it comes out, I mean, it the, the, the news was crazy. I had so many people asking me about it, talking about it, wanting to get in. And I almost jumped in. Like I, I, I got caught up in the hoopla that everybody else did. I wanted to get in. And I remember, I think I had a, a, an order in to buy at like 40 some bucks a share. And then, I don't know, finally just talked some sense into myself and I didn't and I waited and turns out, so if we can kind of follow this chart here, let me see if I can increase this a little bit. I uh, get out of here, add. So, kind of, so 38 bucks a share. This was in May of 2012. And you kind of follow this along. As you can see, it dropped down to 27, jumped back up to 33. And about right here, it actually got lower than 22 got down to below 20s, I got in somewhere in here, about 22.96. Uh, so IPO price at 38 bucks, shot up to 42, got down to 18, and then I bought a majority of my shares around that $22 price point. So that's where I got in May 2000, well, uh, somewhere in 2012. And now, as you can see, current price is $179.65. So that was uh, a definitely a nice gain uh, inside the Roth. So some more tax-free gains. Uh, the other one that okay with was Bank of America, 133 shares uh, for a modest $3,000 gain. So purchase cost of $800. So that's how much of my money I put in. Uh, total value there is $3,861. And then uh, just because to show you that uh, not every <laughs> not every stock pick is a winner, I also bought this uh, stock called Live Ventures Inc. 
And here's a look at its stock chart over the last, uh, I don't know how many years, go back to 2002. Uh, seven to bucks a share, shot up to 152 back in March of 04. And now we've been hovering, uh, got down to a dollar. I think this has been split or something. There's been some uh, restructuring. And here's the embarrassing thing. I don't even know why I bought this stock. Uh, this was not, I would say, a pick that I went out and researched myself. Uh, this was either a research report that I read on some article or some newsletter I was a part of, or somebody told me to buy this because it was like the next great thing. Uh, this one has not worked out that well. But I'll say I'll, in, a, in a positive spin, uh, market value. So I put in $3,600, currently worth uh, $1,336. Uh, for a loss of 2200 bucks. So if you add, add all those up, $3,000 gain, $79,000 gain, $30,000 gain, and then that loss, uh, that's where the total tax-free gain is $110,000. Now, a couple things. One thing, um, I should have said this beforehand, this is by no means any recommendation to buy any of these stocks. Do not take it as such. I am not recommending that you buy any of these stocks. Uh, these are just stocks that I bought at a good time, except for Live Inc. And have uh, it's worked out well for me. So this does not mean that you should go out and buy these stocks. And the other thing, without stating the obvious, uh, as I mentioned earlier, you know, this is a $110,000 gain. Yes, but the truth of the matter is, is that I haven't made anything, I have not made anything until I sell, right? You, you never lock in any profit. So um, I've always kind of get on to people by saying, oh, I made uh, 35% or whatever. I tripled my money in Bitcoin. Have you? Because have you actually sold it? Because until you actually sell, you haven't locked in any profits yet. Uh, so yes, currently on paper, I have a $110,000 tax-free gain. Uh, but until I actually sell some of these, you know, uh, that's, uh, that's neither here, here nor there. So just want to get out that quick disclaimer. But, uh, as, as I mentioned, like the cool thing about this whole strategy was by doing the Roth IRA conversion and getting that nice lump sum in there, you know, that 20 some thousand dollars that gave me more leverage to buy the Facebook stock and visa and just to have more, more capital to invest into these, to take advantage of the tax-free gain. So this is just why I love the Roth IRA. Okay, now you've been able to see some of my stock picks, the good, the bad, and a little bit of the ugly. So does this make sense for you? So right now with where the stock market is at and you are leaving your job, if you have a, had a 401k to roll over, I don't know if this would be the best time, the right time to do it. For me, I would wait to see if we had some sort of sell off, some sort of pullback, so that my 401k balance, whatever it is today, would be a lower amount at that point in time. Now another strategy that you can implement is called the backdoor Roth IRA. So how this works is that if you cannot put into a Roth IRA because you're making too much money, you can put it into a traditional IRA or a non-deductible IRA. And then the IRS, for whatever reason, there is no rules on this now, you can immediately convert that to a Roth IRA. Would you wanna do that? Does it make sense? It really just depends on your tax bracket. I know in my case, that's something that I could have done, but basically I would have to be paying one of the higher tax brackets in that non-deductible IRA contribution for me. So for me, it just didn't make sense. And I decided just to keep funneling money into my 401k and other investments, just to make sure that I'm getting that tax deduction for my business. But I've seen a lot of other people take advantage of the strategy and just waiting until either there's a sell-off in the market, or maybe they made some bad picks and their account value is a little bit less and they can now convert that old retirement account, old 401k into a Roth IRA. So I'm curious, is this something that you could do or is this something that you've implemented yourself? I want to know, I want to hear from you. Leave a comment below. And if you have any questions on the Roth IRA conversion and if it makes sense, let me just say this. You can leave me a question in the comments, but this strategy is so complex and it's so dependent on your individual and personal tax situation. So me trying to answer a simple black and white question is just not really that possible. I have so many people try to do that on a, a blog post I wrote on the Roth IRA conversion and it just it's just not that of a simple question to answer. It's not black and white, there is a lot of gray. 
Either way, I still am curious to know if you have any general questions on the Roth IRA conversion. Is it something that you could do? Would you want to do? Or how about the backdoor Roth IRA? Is that something that you should be implementing? Let me know. I'm curious to know what you think. And if you haven't yet, subscribe. Hello, what are you waiting for? Because guess what? I got more content coming like this to help you understand what your options are and how you can grow your wealth, build your wealth, and take charge of your financial future. This is Jeff Rose. Until next time, see ya. So if you got too much green, the Roth IRA is going to be kind of mean. That was by far the worst joke ever, by the way. That wasn't that funny. That was not that funny. Woo! <clears throat>